Welcome to Blackbriar Gaming. Over the past few weeks, GW has been teasing us each day with a few rules from each of the legions. Though we saw lots of different rules, a lot of the legions didn't enjoy the reveal of their advanced reactions, an important consideration of how that legion will play. To help players choose their legion while putting in their pre-orders, I thought we'd take a look at those advanced reactions that are yet to be revealed. 12 of the legions missed out on their advanced reactions, so we'll go through almost all of them. I don't seem to have the White Scars advanced reaction, so if you happen to have that one, feel free to chuck it down in the comments below, as I'm sure the 5th Legion could use the morale boost. Just a quick note before we get into it, a subscribe and a like really helps us reach a bigger audience, so if you enjoyed the video, please hit those buttons down below. First up, we have the Emperor's Children. Their advanced reaction is the perfect counter. It reads, this advanced reaction may be made once per battle during the opposing player's assault phase when an enemy unit declares a charge targeting a friendly unit under the reactive player's control, composed entirely of models with the Emperor's Children's special rule. When a charge distance roll is made for the enemy unit making the charge, the reactive player must also make a charge distance roll for the reacting unit. If the result of the reacting unit's charge distance roll is equal to or greater than that of the enemy unit, then the reactive player may choose to make a charge with the reacting unit immediately, cancelling the enemy unit's charge if it is successful and getting all the usual benefits of a successful charge, or if the reacting player's charge distance roll is lower than that of the enemy unit, the reactive player may choose to have the unit make a shooting attack targeting the enemy unit and which must be fully resolved before the enemy unit resolves its own charge. A unit that makes a shooting attack as part of a the perfect counter reaction may not make any attacks indirectly, same, 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 fire, defensive weapons, vehicles, blah, 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 uh, wall of death roll. We're going to see that a lot, so I'm not going to go into it each time. Uh, essentially, right, so just to sum this reaction up, the Emperor's Children player is getting charged by an enemy unit. They can choose to charge themselves with their charging unit rolling either equal to or over the charge distance of what the enemy rolled to charge in. If they're successful, they make the charge and get all their bonuses, which for Emperor's Children is great. It means they get their initiative bonus. If they fail, it means they get to do a shooting attack instead uh, as per an Overwatch reaction. So pretty good. Uh, good, if it, good if it passes, great if it passes, uh, but still good if it fails. So that is the Emperor's Children advanced reaction, the perfect counter. Next up, we have the Iron Warriors, the 4th Legion. Their advanced reaction is called Bitter Fury. It reads, This advanced reaction may be made once per battle during the opposing player's shooting phase when any enemy unit declares a shooting attack targeting a friendly unit under the reactive player's control composed entirely of models with the Iron Warriors special rule. Once the active player has resolved all 2 hit and 2 wound rolls, and armor saves are made, but before any damage mitigation rolls are made or casualties removed, the reactive player may make a shooting attack targeting the unit that triggered this reaction, with all weapons making twice their normal number of attacks, but gaining the Gets Hot special rule. To hit rolls for weapons that already possess the Gets Hot special rule, trigger that special rule on a roll of 1 or 2 during this shooting attack, instead of only on a 1. A unit that makes a shooting attack as part of a Bitter Fury reaction may not make any attacks indirectly, include weapons barrage special rules, etc, etc, vehicles defensive weapons, and Bitter Fury rule of death rule instead of firing normally with flavors. Once again, we're seeing, we're seeing that ember here. So, to sum that up, the Iron Warrior's advanced reaction is, if you're shut at, you can shoot back, but you get to make twice the number of attacks. If you're getting shot at, let's say, with a unit of Tyrant Siege Terminators, even five of them, uh, normally getting the 10 missile shots, well, now you're getting 20 shots, 20 missiles from just five Terminators flying out and, uh, and going into the enemy unit that's shooting at you. But it does get hot on a roll of one, so that's going to that's gonna get a bit spicy. Um, but hey, Siege and Tyrant... Siege Tyrant Terminators don't care really because it's AP3 on those missile launchers. They get the 2 plus save. So the Gets Hot rule now takes on the AP of the weapon that's being shot. So that's actually it's actually kind of great. Um, so yeah, that's that's a great use for it. Uh, that one right there. So yeah, Iron Warriors, pretty cool. Uh, I really like it. We'll see something very similar with the Iron Hands in a little bit, but we're not there yet. Next up is the Space Wolf Advanced Reaction. Here we go. It is called No Prey Escapes the Wolf. It reads, 
This advanced reaction may be made once per battle in the opposing player's turn, when any enemy unit with one or more models within 12 inches of a friendly unit made up entirely of models with the Space Wolf special rule is moved during the movement phase. Once the enemy unit that triggered this reaction has been moved, but before any other units moved, a single friendly unit made up entirely of models with the Space Wolf special rule that can draw a line of sight to the enemy unit that moved may immediately move up to a number of inches equal to the highest initiative characteristic in the unit and then declare a charge targeting the enemy unit that moved if it is within 12 inches. A charge declared as part of this reaction is resolved immediately. Uh, the enemy unit may not declare any reaction against this charge, which is really nice. And if successful, the combat will be fought as normal in the following assault phase with a charging unit with a Space Wolf special rule gaining all the normal benefits for charging. This is fantastic. So this happens, just to clarify, this happens in the movement phase. Team, uh, let me just double check that. Yep, you betcha. So it happens before the enemy gets to shoot, which is really good. A lot of these counter charges that we've seen, I think the Imperial Fist one, for example, happen um, in the enemies either after they've shot or they happen, I could be wrong with the Imperial Fist, but we've seen some counter charge ones that happen more so either in the, the shooting phase after they've, they've shot or in the assault phase as well, just like the Emperor's Children one that we just saw. Uh, for this to happen in the movement phase is absolutely fantastic. It's pinning that unit down um, and that they get to move their initiative beforehand. We're talking, you know, four, five, maybe. And let's just check highest initiative. Yeah, you betcha. So if you've got a character in there, it's going to go up. Um, but essentially that they get to move that and then make the charge means even if the unit, enemy unit is just touching within 12, which they kind of have to if they want to get a charge off themselves, slash they 100% do have to, uh, you're going to be able to charge in. So good. So good. It's going to be pretty good odds of getting that charge off too. You're looking at probably a seven or eight inch charge. So that's fantastic. After you've moved your initiative, I should say. Really nice. Um, no Prey Escapes Wolf. Aptly named. This is going to be pretty powerful for the Space Wolves, I think. All right. Moving on to the Night Lord's Advanced Reaction. It is called The Better Part of Valor. I love this one. This advanced reaction may be made once per battle during the assault phase when any enemy unit declares a charge targeting a friendly unit under the reactive player's control with the Night Lord special rule. Before the charge is resolved, the target unit falls back as if it had failed a morale check, but it immediately regroups once that move is completed and suffers none of the usual restrictions for a unit that has regrouped and may move, run, charge, and make shooting attacks as normal. If, if this movement causes the target unit to move more than 12 inches from or out of sight of the charging unit, then the active player may redirect the charge to target another enemy unit within range. But if the target unit remains within 12 inches and within line of sight of the charging unit, the target unit must attempt the original charge. If the fallback caused by this reaction forces the reacting unit to reach the edge of the battlefield, it immediately stops moving and regroups, but suffers none of the usual restrictions for a unit that has regrouped, etc, etc. This is, this is really fun. And I think this is one of the, the few we've seen of, of this type. Maybe there was maybe another, another move one when being assaulted. But, uh, but either way, Night Lords, pretty cool. You, are, you fall back away from the enemy because why would you stand there and take a charge like a chump? You don't, you don't have any honor. You're not worried about that. Uh, so the Night Lords gets to make a fallback move, 2d6, I believe. Uh, it might have changed in the new edition. I'm not 100% sure on that. If someone knows, please uh, please put it down in the comments below. But what you want to do is move away from them, probably leaving one model just within 12 inches of that enemy unit. So they've got to make that 12 inch charge if they're going to be successful and forcing them to make it and no doubt failing it. And then in your turn, next turn, your counter charging, you're, you're shooting at them, you're just taking complete advantage of it. Uh, it's just, it's, it's setting a trap essentially with a, with a Night Lords unit. I think it's really fun. Good to see. So that is the Night Lords advanced reaction. Blood Angels advanced reaction. Okay, it is called the Wrath of Angels. This advanced reaction may be made a once per battle during the opposing player's shooting phase when any enemy player declares a shooting attack, targeting a unit composed entirely of models with the infantry unit type and the Blood Angels special role under the reactive player's control. All models in the unit targeted by the shooting attack that triggers this reaction gain the shrouded 5 plus special rule against all wounds inflicted as part of the shooting act that triggered this reaction. If the acting unit already had a version of Shrouded, this does not stack, etc, etc. 
Once the shooting attack has been completely resolved, the reacting unit may have a charge declared for it. Weird wording. Sure. Following all the normal rules for charging and targeting the enemy unit that made the shooting attack. The enemy... Ah, this is what I was talking about before. The enemy unit may not make a reaction to this charge and it is fully resolved immediately after it is declared. If the charge is successful, the units are locked in combat and fight in the assault phase as normal with the charging unit benefiting from any charge bonuses, hammer of wrath, etc. If the charge fails, no surge move is made. All right, cool. So getting um getting a shrouded five plus, that's just one of the regular reactions. What the Blood Angels reaction chucks on top of that is that you get to charge straight after being shot, which is, you know, look, <laughs> it'd be nice if you could charge before you were shot and taking all those wounds, but that's okay. It's, it's still pretty good. So you get the five plus shrouded, which is that shrug uh, to try and take less damage uh, and then charging in straight away. Now, look, I don't, I don't love this advanced reaction is probably the least of the favorite that we've seen so far today because the enemy is going to be, have to be pretty close. So it's only going to be relevant for those units that are doing some, some close shooting attacks. And for the most part, I mean, sure. Um, there's a lot of, a lot of bolt of fire going backwards and forwards where people are going to be within, want to be within 12 inches. Uh, so look, it's a, it's a thing. It'll happen. It's, I don't think it's, it's amazing. It's only going to come up on, not in niche circumstances, but certainly a lot of the shooting happening in the game will be outside of that 12 inches where you could possibly charge. So less exciting for those circumstances, but will it come off? Yeah, it'll come off. Um, it is what it is. Not not overly enthused, but uh, but look, it's combining the, the protection of the shrouded and getting a charge off in your opponent's turn, which is which is not which is not bad. It's not shabby. You know, it is what it is. All right, that is the Blood Angels. Moving on to the Iron Hands. Their reaction is the Gorgon's Spite. This advanced reaction may be made once per battle during the opposing player's assault phase when any enemy player declares a charge targeting a friendly unit under the reactive player's control that is composed entirely of models with the Iron Hands special rule. Once the active player has resolved all charge rolls for the charge that triggers this reaction, whether successful or not, but before any models are moved as part of either a charge move or surge move, the reactive player may make a shooting attack with the unit that has had a charge declared against it, targeting the unit that triggered this reaction with all weapons making twice their normal number of attacks, but gaining the get hot. Uh, sorry, gaining the gets hot special rule. Uh, yep, look very similar. All the stuff about defensive weapons, template weapons, wall of death, etc., etc. Uh, another point here, much like the iron warriors that we saw before, a point here: the unit targeted by the gorgon's spite attack may not take cover saves against wounds inflicted as part of a gorgon's spite reaction. Now you might be thinking, this sounds very familiar to the iron warriors one. Uh, yes and no. The difference here is that it's not activated when you're shot at; it's activated when you're charged. So it's like a really beefed up Overwatch kind of situation where the enemy is charging in and you're shooting at them as they're coming at you and you're making twice your number of attacks. <laughs> Until this pops off, this is going to make charging an Iron Hands army really scary. Uh, the cover saves uh, makes a lot of sense because the enemy's charging, right? They're, they're running at you, so they're not going to be taking cover as they're doing that, charging into assault. So that's why they get that little piece over the Iron Warriors, I suppose. Yeah, this is this is good, right? Um, firing Overwatch on full ballistic skill, which I believe is a thing. Correct me if I'm wrong. Is already good, but getting twice the number of attacks, even once per game, is is wild. And this is going to make that first assault <laughs> any assault really, because you can't even you can't even choose to make your first assault with a unit you don't care about that much. Because the Iron Hands player, they just hold on to this until until later. You can't even bait it out. You just have to know that one of your key assaults that you're going to make is going to get absolutely punished. So there we go. That is the Iron Hands Advanced Reaction. Super good. Their rules are super good too. I think we're, we're seeing a theme for these Iron Hands. Next up is the Ultramarines. Here we go. Their Advanced Reaction is called Unity of Purpose. This Advanced Reaction may be made once per battle during the opposing player's shooting phase when any enemy player declares a shooting attack targeting a friendly unit with the reactive player's control composed under the reactive player's control, composed entirely of models with the Ultramarine special rule. Once the active player has resolved all two hit rolls to wound rolls and armor saves are made, but before any damage mitigation rolls are made or casualties removed, the reactive player may choose to expend one of the, their reactions for that phase 
oh, just keeps going, to have both the unit targeted by the shooting attack and one other unit composed entirely of models, which Ultramarine Special Rules, make a shooting attack, targeting the unit that triggered this reaction and following all the usual rules for shooting attacks. Any unit that makes a shooting attack as part of a unity of purpose reaction may not make any attacks indirectly, barrage weapons, line of sight, vehicles, defensive weapons, etc, etc, wall of death, flamers, 8 inches. Both units that make shooting attacks as part of this reaction are considered to have made a reaction in this phase and as such may not make any further reactions. Just to sum that up, a normal reaction in this game, a core reaction, if you will, is that when you get shot at, uh, one of your units can can shoot back. Well, the Ultramarines, they do it. They do it different. When an enemy unit shoots at your unit, you not only get to shoot back with that unit before damage is taken, you get to shoot back with another unit. And let's see, are there any conditions around that? Just quickly. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Shooting attack, telling the unit, shooting there. Um, mm-mm. Before I'm there, the rack player, choose to expend have both the unit and one other unit. It can be any unit on the table that has line of sight and range. That is wild. They don't need to be within 12 inches of each other or anything like that that you often see with these kind of rules. They need to be close to take advantage and we, we've seen that with the Ultramarines' other rules. Uh, they're right at war, I believe, was it? Or they're, yeah, something, something ultramarine required units to be close to each other. No, I think it was their Legion rule. This rule, however, it can, that, that unit could be on the other side of the table, but if their weapons are, are long range enough and they've got line of sight, you can shoot with them. So... This is gonna be this is gonna be really good for a for a one one shot go uh, where two of your units get to shoot at an enemy, absolutely punishing them in their own shooting phase. So pretty good, pretty good. Uh, it will be it will be impactful. Good job, Ultramarines. Next up, next up we have the Death Guard Advanced Reaction. It is called Remorseless Advance. This is a short one. What a what a gift. This advanced reaction may be made once per battle during the opposing player's shooting phase when any enemy unit declares a shooting attack targeting a friendly unit under the reactive player's control with the Death Guard special rule. All models in the unit targeted by the shooting attack that trigger this reaction gain the Feel No Pain 4 plus special rule against hits inflicted by the shooting attack and automatically pass any morale checks or pinning tests they are called upon to take as a result of this shooting attack. Once the shooting attack has been entirely resolved, the unit may make a move in any direction up to 7 inches and obeying all the normal rules for making a move. Why is that one so short and all the, all the others aren't? Why do they need so many more words? Okay, so to sum this one up, you get shot at, uh, you decide it's going to hurt, so you pop off a 4 plus feel no pain, very nice. You automatically pass morale checks and pinning tests. Love that. Love the pinning test automatically pass bit. That's really nice. And on top of that, you get to move up to seven inches. That's really far. What is with Death Guard in second edition being this wild maneuverable force moving all over the place? So feel no pain, passing rail and pinning checks, and then move in any direction up to seven inches. Craziness. Now the feel no pain, it, you know, eh, uh, it's good. It's good, don't get me wrong. And four plus certainly is great, but apothecaries are a thing in 30K and they're pretty common. I guess this means you could take less of them and not pay the points. So look, I'm not I'm not saying it's bad. Um, there's just other ways to gain it. So I don't love to see feel no pain effects in advanced reactions, uh, but it is what it is. But four plus is better. It's better than what you're getting from the Apothecary, carry, unless I'm incorrect there, but I'm pretty sure it is. So that's that's fine. Uh, you and there's plenty of units that won't have apothecaries. So I take it back. I take my I take my shaming back. Um, this is really good. It's really good. I love the move. It's seven seven inches. That's that's crazy. These guys are moving so fast across the table. Good for you, Death Guard. You're doing your own thing. Next up is the Word Bearers Advanced Reaction. And this advanced reaction is called Glorious Martyrdom. This is so good. Here we go. This advanced reaction may be made once per battle during the opposing player's shooting phase when any enemy unit declares a shooting attack, targeting a friendly unit under reactive player's control with the Word Bearer special rule. Once this reaction has been declared, a single model in the reacting unit with the special, word bearer special rule is selected by the reacting unit's controlling player. So a single model. That model is removed as a casualty immediately without any to hit or to wound rolls being made by the attacking unit and with no armor saves or damage mitigation rolls made by the reactive player. This ends the shooting attack with no further rolls or tests being made. If any of the weapons in the attacking unit would normally inflict further hits after causing an unsaved wound, such as 
deflagrate, deflagrate, or, or something like that, uh, or other effects, blah, 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 then these additional hits or effects are ignored and have no effect. Any attacks made with weapons with the ordnance or destroyer types or the blast or template special rules ignore the effect of this reaction and are resolved as normal. So that last bit there, there are a lot of weapons with ordnance and blast and template, but there's lots with, that don't have that, right? So what you're doing to sum it up is you're getting shot at by a really powerful enemy unit and you know it's gonna absolutely decimate your, uh, your guys that are trying to march up the table. So you just remove one model, one single model and the rest of the units absolutely fine. All that other, all that shooting, that, all that shooting from that unit is ignored. They kill one guy, one guy alone, and you crack on. Really good, really good. Uh, there's going to be plenty of circumstances where this would be a bit meh. Plenty of circumstances where you won't get to use it because of the type of weapon that's shooting at you. But there's also going to be a whole bunch of circumstances where just removing one model instead of the, you know two, three, four, five, six, seven, however many otherwise might have been killed by a whole lot of firepower coming your way it's going to feel really great. So that's Glorious Martyrdom, the Word Bearers Advanced Reaction. Very impressed. Well done, Word Bearers. That's cool. Next up, we have the Salamanders. So the Salamanders special, uh, Advanced Reaction, I should say, is Duty is Sacrifice. This Advanced Reaction may be made once per battle during the opposing player's assault phase when any enemy player declares a charge targeting a friendly unit under the reactive player's control and composed entirely of models with the Salamander special rule. If the enemy unit's charge is successful, all models with the infantry unit type in the target unit gain a bonus of plus one to their weapon skill, strength, and attacks characteristic for the duration of that assault phase. However, once the combat uh, that includes the unit that made this reaction has been selected, all models involved have made their attacks and any morale checks required as part of that combat are fully resolved Roll a d6 for each model remaining in the unit that makes this reaction. For each dice that scores a 6 or more, the unit suffers one automatic wound, against which no armor saves or damage mitigation rolls of any kind may be made. Oof. Oof. Uh, if the charge that triggers duty of sacrifice is unsuccessful, all models in the unit for which the reaction was declared instead gain the fearless special rule until the end of the controlling player's next turn, and do not roll to see if any models suffer automatic wounds. That last bit's really nice. Uh, they're, they're thinking, they're thinking about things that could happen here. So look, you're getting plus one weapon skill, strength and attacks when being charged. That's really nice. That's really good, right? Uh, and weapon skill makes a big difference in this edition. So super impressed with that. Attacks are also pretty hard to come by in, in Horus Heresy for all these 40k players out there. So that's super powerful, but one sixth of your models are gonna cop a wound. Look, with elite, Infantry now, you know, Terminators, Veterans, um, lots of Specialist units having two wounds. This isn't as punishing as it may sound. Remember, it's it's one in six models, so probably only one at the end of that assault. You're probably going to take one wound, depending on how many guys are left. And if you've got, if it's on a unit that has two wounds, which it might be, because you're probably going to keep this for one of your your better units, um, then you're not even killing a guy. But meanwhile, you're getting plus one weapon skill, strength, or attacks. So I think this is pretty good. Uh, even if you, you pop it off and the enemy, it sucks that it has to be when the enemy player declares a charge. It'd be great to say, you know, after an enemy player completes a successful charge uh, as opposed, because just being fearless eh, for the next turn, it's good. You know, fearless is great, but it'd be nicer to hold on to this because if the enemy unit fails their charge, you've, you've kind of wasted it. Getting fearless is better than nothing, but it still kind of feels like a waste compared to that that plus one to weapon skill strength and attacks. So pretty good. Uh, the little qualifier there is a bit disappointing, but it is what it is. So that is the Salamander's advanced reaction. Lastly, we have the Alpha Legion advanced reaction. It is called Smoke and Mirrors. This advanced reaction may be made once per battle during the shooting phase when any enemy player declares a shooting attack targeting a friendly unit under the reactive player's control composed entirely of models with the Alpha Legion special rule. Before resolving the shooting attack, the unit targeted by the shooting attack may be redeployed. To redeploy the unit, the controlling player selects one model from the unit making this reaction and places it anywhere within 12 inches of its original position and then scatters the model d6 inches. Uh, if it hits impassable terrain, buildings, fortification, one inch of enemy models, blah, 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 it stops. Uh, once this model is placed, all other models from the reacting unit may be placed anywhere within six inches of that model, at least one inch from any enemy model and in unit coherency. Any models that cannot be placed must be removed as casualties. 
Once the redeployment is complete, the active player may resolve their shooting attack as normal. If the shooting attack is no longer valid once this redeployment is complete, due to the enemy unit no longer having line of sight to the target unit, for example, then the active player may not select a different target and no attacks are made or dice rolled for that unit. This is brutal. So to start, you're moving 12 inches with that unit and it's from any one of the models, right? So if you've got a, a unit that's covering, you know, you've got 10 models in it, that's covering quite a bit of board space. Going 12 inches out from any single one of those models is wild. You can move in a crazy direction and distance. Uh, so the enemy is going to find it really hard to know where you're going to go and to stop you from taking advantage of this. The Scatters D6 hurts a little. It hurts just a tad if you're scattering, if you move beautifully behind a wall to hide yourself and you scatter D6 out into the open, it's really going to hurt. Noting that you then get to put the rest of the unit within six and coherency so you can still kind of get them behind that behind that wall. Um, but, but yes, the scatter is, look, I know why they did it. Uh, I get it, but it hurts a little. Um, shutting down the enemy's ability to select a different target is really nice. So this is just going to absolutely waste that unit's shooting. It's just going to do nothing if you manage to move out of line of sight, which is what this is intended for. Another way that this Legion uh, advanced reaction is super powerful is any short range weapon that the enemy might be trying to bring to bear. So, you know, trying to get rapid fire off on plasma guns, melter guns. Uh, just to clarify, this is not just infantry. I could be wrong here, but from what I see, this is not just infantry. This is any unit. So anytime the enemy comes down with a drop pod, they jump out with their melter guns, they get super excited because they're going to get off some sweet, you know, half range melter shots and have the best time ever. See ya, that tank that they were going for has just moved 12 inches away from them. Maybe even further with, uh, with that scatter. Hopefully not too much closer. So that's just so good. It is really shutting down the enemy's close range firepower. Uh, same, same templates. If they come down with a whole bunch of guys with flamers, you're just, you're out of there, right? Uh, it's also really going to shut down the enemy's ability or, or you know, keenness, um, their intent. If they want to get a charge off, they are not going to be shooting at you first with anything. Uh, because even if they shoot with a different unit from the one assaulting, you can still move. You can, you can get out of there. So if they want to be charging, they're not going to be shooting the unit that they want to that they want to charge until they've uh, they've drawn this advanced reaction out. So that's Smoke and Mirrors for the Alpha Legion. It is wild. It is so good. I am so happy with that one. And that is the last advanced reaction that we're looking at today. And that brings us to the end of our Heresy Chats for today. Thank you so much for watching. Are you happy with your Legion's advanced reactions? Are there any that are standing out as particularly powerful or particularly mediocre? What's your thoughts? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Make sure to keep rolling those dice and getting hyped for heresy.